the uh, back to here. OK, we are recording. All right, class, we are definitely recording right now. And as I said, your notes are due tonight. Um, the test over this section is going to be Friday and the big test over the chapter is on next Wednesday. All right, today we're talking about the biosphere. Um, section one covered the geosphere, the core mantle and crust. Section two covered the atmosphere, the air. Section three covered the hydrosphere and the biosphere. We did the hydrosphere already. We did two days worth of ocean discussion different things about the ocean, the currents and stuff in the hydrosphere and how much water was in each place. Today we're talking about the biosphere. All right, now the biosphere is the one that it includes pieces of all of the rest. There are the biosphere is where anywhere that there are living things and there are living things in every one of the other spheres. Let me get James in. Okay, James. James. 222. All right, James, we're in Schoology. Can you go ahead and open today's Schoology? We're having a discussion. All right, so in um, so within the biosphere, that's anywhere in the world that an organism can live. All right, so we have some things that live, microscopic organisms that live in the soil. We have animals that burrow in the ground. We have vegetation, plants and stuff that can live almost everywhere. Okay, in the water, on the land. OK, and anywhere in between, we have animals that can live in all places and the sea creatures and birds in the air. But the thing about it is it's not unlimited. We can live anywhere on the Earth. However, things in the biosphere only go about seven miles down into the ocean and about six miles up into the atmosphere. That's it. Seven miles down, six miles up because that's where the materials are that they're going to need to survive. So the materials they need have to be recycled within the, the food webs and food chains. You know how you go the, the producer herbivore carnivore and then at the end the decomposers take everything and they put it back for the next group. OK, all of those things that in the all the nutrients have to be recycled with food chains and we're going to learn food chains soon. Um, but so the biosphere is where those things get recycled. And so the biosphere is where the organisms live because that's where they find that stuff. Now, when we're talking about the recycling of the nutrients, gravity is one of the main things. Gravity helps to hold the atmosphere on and a lot of the recycling happens in the air um, and it also helps that recycling go through. So the biosphere is the only place that is suitable or has suitable conditions for the animals to live and survive. So these four points right here on this thing, these are the four points that describe the biosphere for you. OK, it's uh, seven miles down, six miles up. This is where the materials are con continually recycled. Gravity is allowing the recycling to happen because it happens and the gravity, of course, is about the geosphere, right? It the gravity holds the atmosphere. There's the second sphere. OK, holds it on within the hydrosphere and all the animals, the nutrients are recycled. So we're all using all of the four spheres together. So that's the third part. And the fourth part is that this is the only area where you have suitable conditions for life. Now looking at all the different animals in the, the organisms, not just animals, the different organisms in the biosphere, look at all we have here. OK, and, and fully half of all of the living things on Earth are bugs. Look at this, insects. This circle represents every living thing on the earth. Every living thing on the earth is included in this circle somewhere. And so over half of the living things on earth are bugs, which is kind of gross. All right, this green part, these are the plants. And if you add in this little pink area, that's the algae. So if you got plants and algae in this area, this little bitty purple bit, this is the stuff like paramecium and euglena, the little single celled organisms. Okay, they're down here. Here's our funguses, okay, mushrooms and stuff. Here is every animal. Horses, cows, pigs, humans, crabs, lizards, snails. Every animal is in this category. Okay. Every um this is well the bugs are animals, okay. In the insects is a group by itself, but all the rest of the animals that are not insects are in this blue area. This tiny little red is for viruses. OK, because there's some doubt as to whether or not viruses are living or not living. And so they're included in here in this tiny little red section. This is where you'll find COVID. 
in that little red section. So stay away from the red. All right, so I'm, I'm messing. All right, so the biosphere is located near the Earth's surface, either from the bottom of the ocean or top, wherever it is, six miles down, seven miles up, nine miles. Hang on, let me get it again. Six miles down, seven miles up. Yeah, so six miles down, seven miles up because it's near the surface of the Earth because this is where the sunlight hits. The sunlight, of course, comes through space, but it has to hit the surface to warm the area. Because this is where the sunlight is, this is where photosynthesis happens. Right? You're only going to get food chains if you have some sort of producer, usually a plant. Not always. You have chemosynthesis in the deep oceans. But still, you're only going to get plants in the area where sunlight can reach. And so because of that, if you don't have plants there, then there'll be no way to have food chains there, Charles. And 227. All right, so that's another thing about the biosphere. The reason it's at the surface right here is because this is where the sunlight is. And so this is where the plants are. The plants have to have this sunlight to make their food. And almost every organism gets its food from these plants. So we, that starts all the food chains. So if the plants can't get the sunlight they need and the warm temperature, then nothing gets fed. And we also have here that the algae um, floating at the surface is phytoplankton. They wanted to add this in because when we think of producers, okay, we think of plants, but that's not all there is. You also have algae. You see this right here, it looks like seaweed. Okay, there are some algaes that are that look like seaweeds and they're near the edges of the freshwater and saltwater algae is seaweed but algae is also that microscopic things that float on the surface like pond scum okay but all of that is near the edges of water out in the open ocean algae doesn't go there seaweed doesn't really go there out in the open ocean the producer that is there is phytoplankton so you know plankton like spongebob's buddy the word phyto in front of it means photosynthesis so phytoplankton can do photosynthesis and there's another type of plankton called zooplankton. Zo, Z-O-O, plankton. Sounds like zoo, right? This is a little animal. So the phytoplankton does photosynthesis. It's microscopic. It does photosynthesis and it floats across the surface of the ocean. The zooplankton eats that. And that's one of the basics of all the starting of the food chains in the open ocean, even as big as a whale. Okay, the phytoplankton are microscopic little um, things that plankton that does photosynthesis and then the zooplankton eat them and then you can start all the food chains at the surface of the ocean okay even if you're nowhere near the edges all right now the energy that we use for this um, to make this this food chain happen to make us help us survive in the biosphere the energy that's used here has to be obtained and continually supplied we have a picture down here of a terrarium okay the earth is like a terrarium the sun and some of the heat can go in and out, but the materials are stuck inside of there. All right, so the energy that we use for the food chains has to be obtained from the outside and it has to be continually supplied. We have to get more and more sunlight so that more and more plants can live. And then once the plants can get the sunlight, then something will eat them and then they die. The decomposers break them down and they bring nutrients back for the next generation of plants. So the only way that the plants, so the matter and nutrients cycle through and they don't ever leave, but we have to have continual inputs of energy for the cycle to continue. So uh, the energy used by the organisms has to be obtained in the biosphere and has to be continually supplied. It's like a cycle. You have to keep giving it sunlight to make it keep running. And then when the organism dies, the body's broken down and the nutrients become available for the next generation. And this flow of energy allows life to continue and exist. So energy comes in and heat pumps out. All right, but the matter stays in and cycles between. So that's why we have this terrarium here. We talked about it before, closed system and open systems. Yes, Ashley, do you have a question about this? No, can I go? Use then it has to wait, baby. OK. Is it a question about our lesson today? No. Then hold on to it for me, OK? I want to use a restroom. Oh, okay. Um, if it has to be right now, okay. Um, I am recording this today, so you can check it later. If you can wait, I've only got just a few minutes left, but if you have to go now, you can go now. 
Okay, I'll wait. Thank you, dear. All right, so the um, we talked about closed system and open systems. Okay, if the Earth is like a terrarium, the sunlight can come in and heat can go out so it's an open system for energy but the nutrients inside of it stay so what if the dinosaurs used up all the carbon what if the mammoths used up all the potassium what if the cavemen used up all the water then nothing would work right so we have to have the nutrients recycled and recycled we get plenty of sunlight all the time and that's what keeps the other stuff spinning OK, the nutrients have to be recycled within the different spheres. That's what this chapter is about, right? This chapter is about the spheres, the geosphere, the hydrosphere, the atmosphere and the biosphere. Those spheres, it's a circling. The sunlight comes in and it generates the engine, so to speak, of the nutrients going around. So the closed systems are the ones that cannot exchange matter or energy with the surroundings. It's stuck. The open system means that energy and matter can go back and forth. So the Earth is like a closed system for matter, but it's an open system for energy. Now, I do have a question though. Um, what if I said, what if I was asking you, is a forest pond ecosystem? A forest pond ecosystem. Do you think that would be closed or open? It would be open because if I don't, if I can't find the food that I need here, I just go somewhere else. There's no line around the edges of the ecosystem, right? So within Earth, the individual ecosystems are open. I can move where I need to. But as far as the whole Earth, it's closed. OK, we can't go anywhere else beyond just here on the planet. Do you guys understand me? Can I see some thumbs? Let me see some thumbs up. Ashley, once you tell me you understand, then you're free to go. Then but come straight back, OK? Let me see some thumbs up. Did I get the chat line open? There it goes. Oh, yeah. All right. OK, oh. awesome. Thank you, baby. So give me a thumbs up class. Do you understand what I've talked about today? Do you understand how the biosphere works? Do you understand how it's only seven miles down and six miles up? Do you understand the different types of animals and plants and organisms that are part of the biosphere? Do you understand how we use the plants use the sunlight to help the nutrients cycle through? Okay, do you understand that we have to have energy put in all the time to keep this thing running? Do you understand that though energy and, and heat can go in and out of the system, within the matter and nutrients, the matter we're stuck. And nutrients we're turn, stuck. Your mic off. turn your mic off. Unless you have a question. Do you have a question? Who's no. that? Leave your mic off, baby. Okay, so um, so this is how it works. So we got the closed system and open system. Do you understand that? on earth the different ecosystems could be considered open because i can leave from one ecosystem to the next but as far as the whole earth it's closed kind of sound good okay i'm good good i've seen a lot of people with your thumbs up excellent excellent wonderful good 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 all right so um i'm gonna go ahead and stop the video oh, wait do you have any questions first does anybody have anything they need to ask me about the lesson Okay, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. All right, stop.